So welcome Tina and Heather and Garpkash and Rajinder and Rebecca Dawson and Highborn. Uh, welcome to this is the week five webinar for our Math 159 preparation for statistics class. And uh, let me share my desktop and I'll talk about the plan of the day. Okay, so the plan today is that we will be, uh, I'll start out just a little bit about the midterm, not too much today. That's really a week from now um, in terms of when I'll talk about it, but a little bit just so you can prepare. Um, and then after that, we'll get into powers. So how do you find a power of a number? And in particular, how do you do it on a calculator or a computer? Because that's how you'll really use it and what does it mean? And then we'll do the same with roots. Talk about what is, how do you get a square root and how do you use technology for that. And then um, we'll spend a bunch of time on order of operations. Order of operations is crucial. If you get that wrong um, in stats, you're gonna get a lot of problems wrong because it's a big part of statistics to do calculations that are a little complex you use a calculator or computer, but if you don't understand the order of operations, you'll think you have the right answer and you don't. So I'll talk about that. I'll talk about um, some of the things we can do. Uh, I'll talk about PEMDAS and uh, you know what that is. And it turns out that that's not enough, even though that's what you learn in um, you know middle school or high school, whatever you learned it. Um, it's actually not enough to really understand the order of operations. Uh, and it's part of the modern world is one of the reasons for that. And then we'll practice, we'll do some problems. Um, so that is the plan today. And it's not, I don't think it's an evil day or anything. Um, most of you are somewhat relaxed today. Until I tell you the news, uh, it might take away some of your relaxation. And that is next week. What happens next week? So what happens next week is a big question. Anyone remember? Yeah. Midterm. Yeah, next week is the midterm. Um, so the midterm is really the first main evaluation. You know, you have your homeworks you have to do, but the and your discussion posts. But the main, you know, part of this course in terms of points for the course, the midterm is taken. Um, take it very seriously. So I, I'm not going to spend too much time talking about today because. Our webinar in six days will be all about the midterm, and that's all I'll be talking about. So um, there's no reason to go through it now. But I will let you know that um, all of the assignments that you have had to do from the beginning of class till now are still open to practice, and that's the best way to get ready for the midterm, is to practice, is to do more problems and Look at some of those old assignments. Okay, so that's a plan. Um, I do want to let you know, um, it's kind of a warning too, is that I, I take this class a little lighter than I take um, other classes that, that are high, that are transfer level, like statistics, and calculus, and that kind of stuff. Uh, it, you're on your honor to, you know, do it right and to not cheat, not get help, and all that kind of stuff. So. The reason I can do that is that this class is all about just getting ready for stats. And if you don't care about learning this stuff, then there's no reason to take this class. Um, but hopefully you do care and you wanna make sure that you're ready so that you can succeed in the stats class. That's all that matters. So I don't do a full like, you know, proctorio, everybody's watching you while you're taking it kind of thing in this class. But in statistics, you will be required to do a proctored test. And that's just a big warning. Uh, in this class, we don't do a full proctored test where there's either a webcam watching you in this time of coronavirus, or if you're not in coronavirus, you actually could go to a proctor center if you take it online. And then you take it in a library or whatever. And if you take it face-to-face, -face, then you take it in the college with the instructor watching. So that's just a note. Um, I figure I should let you know the big difference between this class and the stats class. 
is that this class is a lot less um, strict, I think is the right word. Okay. So yeah, yeah. So Proctorio, if, I think someone says, uh, oh, webcam. Yeah, so Proctorio requires a webcam, by the way. Um, so, so next year, I, I really hope that we'll be back to the reality in the fall. <laughs> but if we're not, then yeah, you have to have webcam. If you live in the Tahoe area, then um, we give out free computers to everyone um, to loan for the whole quarter. Um, and you could have it for this class too. But, and webcams required and those computers do have it. Uh, but anyhow, that's the plan and that's the thought. And again, I wanted to get you ready and thinking about the test. Um, and I will be checking the Q&A forum um, often. So if anyone has any questions, you know, if you're practicing something and you don't understand something, you're welcome to post that. Not just for the midterm, but for anything. You're, you know, I'm, I check often. So please post and I'll get back to you usually within a couple hours unless I'm sleeping and then we'll be there like that. So any questions about anything? Any questions? Give me a second to think about questions. And if you don't, um, and again, questions you can ask um, just using your mic or you can pop into the webcam either way. And if you don't have questions, I think we'll talk about um, powers. Uh, we'll see how long today goes. There's, there's not too much to talk about. It's one of the lighter days, um, but we might go the whole time, we'll see. So let's start with powers. And powers come up in statistics a bunch, um, especially probability, but some other places too. So powers, let me just remind you what it means to take a power. So if you had something like three, I'm going to pop it and make it be in half. Let's say you had three to the fourth power. What does that mean? What does three that mean? Three. Yeah. Huh? Three times three times three times three. Exactly, exactly. Um, it's kind of, it's an extension of um, multiplication. I don't know if you realize that. But if you had four times three, that would be three plus three plus three plus three. If you have three to the fourth power, that is three times three times three times three. Okay? So that's kind of the idea of powers. Now, that doesn't always work. Why doesn't, why does that idea not always work for powers? Any, any thoughts? If there's decimals in the powers, I don't know. Yeah, exactly, exactly. If the, if, if, if we're talking about, I don't know, how about, how about something that's really tro totally impossible? If I asked you to do three to the okay, that won't ever be asked in stats, but I just want to kind of show you why things can go wrong. Well, you can't just say, well, that's three times three times three times, well, then what? A little bit of a three? Uh, that doesn't make any sense, does it? So what I will tell you is that Probably in your entire lifetime, you will never learn what it really means to say three to the pi. Sound good? Okay. Perfect. Okay, but what you but you will be required to do is to be able to put that in a calculator. Because if you were given three to the pi, there is no way, no way at all that you could do this by hand without like very advanced mathematics. I mean, I could do it to as many decimals as you want, but you can't but we can use a computer really easily. And that's the good news. So if you wanted three to the pi or um, what you have to do, or even let's go um, instead of three to the pi, how about, pick one that actually comes up more often, two to the 10th. If you wanted to take two to the 10th power, 
Okay, this one you could probably do. Okay, anyone know why this one's important? Anywhere this one comes up in the world? It's not really stats as much as the world. You've heard the word for it. There's a word for this one, and you've heard the, and you've all heard the word. You know where this comes up? No, nope. this is called a kilobyte. Have you heard that word? What did you say, kilobyte? A kilobyte, like in computers. Oh, yep, yep. If you if you if you're using a kilobyte of your you know memory or whatever, that's what two to the tenth is. Okay, so it actually does come up, um, and that's because computers work on binary, so there's two stuff. Again, I'm not going to get into that, but what I will get into is how do you put this into a calculator or a computer? So what you don't want to do is write two. Here, here's what it's not. Don't write this. What's wrong with that? It's like saying two plus two plus two plus two. Exactly. That's two times 10, and that's not what we want. Okay. So what you all need to know is how to, what the symbol is for power. So let me write this down. The symbol for power is this thing, sometimes called a wedge, okay? It's also shift six is how you type it in a computer. Any questions on that? Any questions? So that's ha that is the key thing in terms of getting the um, power thing. I think this is really because there's a lot of feedback going on. And again, um, feel free to unmute yourself if you want to talk. But I just want to make sure that we don't have feedback going on. I'm hearing myself twice. I don't know if y'all are too, but probably if I'm hearing it. Um, but again, you know, welcome to unmute yourself just when you need to talk. Any questions at all on any questions at all on Any questions for the symbol for power? Okay, so now what I want you to do, okay, is I want you to calculate using your computer or calculator, two to the 10th power. And, uh, too late, I was gonna say, don't put it in the chat box yet. But someone did already, oh well. Um, but calculate two to the 10th power, I wanna make sure you all can calculate it. And of course, you should all have the same answers because there is an answer. I'm not going to tell you whether the one in the chat box is right or not, but we'll see in a bit. Okay, and I have this one memorized, by the way, because it's really important. So everyone should be calculating to the 10th because it's really important to know how to do powers. If you can't do powers, you're going to be screwed next quarter because they come up a lot. Okay, looks like a bunch of you are getting it, 1,024. Okay, so two to the 10th, let's write this down. I'm gonna not write, don't write, now let's actually do it, equals two to the 10th, which is equal to 1024. Okay, which I actually have memorized. In fact, I have a lot of powers that you memorize. I'll tell you, if, uh, here's, a, here's a word to the wise. You ever have trouble getting to sleep at night? So if you ever have trouble getting to sleep at night, here's my suggestion. Take powers of two in your head and you will fall asleep. I, I promise. Probably before you even get to 1024. 248, 1632, 64, 128, 236, 512, 1024, 2048, 4093. I'll keep going. But the point is, is that um, it's a good way to fall asleep is do math. 
and it helps you for this class. So you'll start getting used to that. Okay, and it really does work. Okay, uh, I'll do that. I'll also factor prime num uh, factor large numbers in my head. Uh, it gets you to fall asleep because what happens is you stop thinking about all the things you're worried about, and you just like your brain gets tired and you go to sleep. And you want to go to sleep because you don't want to be doing what you're doing in your head. So, two to the tenth is a thousand twenty-four. Any questions on that? Okay, we could do this with any kind of power. Okay, uh, in particular, we could do something like 56 to the one half power. Let's do it in simple. And I'll write it as 56 to the, let's go 0 0.5 so you can see it better. Let's see if you can compute 56 to the 0 0.5 power. I can do this mostly in my head. But let's see what you get. Good. I got 7.5 in my head, but I can't get that many decimals in my head. So that's equal to, again, 7.4833. Okay, just note if you're doing the homework online, it's going to tell you how many decimals to round it to. So what if I say round it, round 2.5, let's write it to the Five point seven power to the to three decimal places. Okay, so now you got to remember not what we did today only, but you also have to know how to round numbers. So that rounding comes up a lot. So let's see if you could do that again. The chance of you being able to do this by hand is pretty much zero because this is brutal, especially in, in five minutes, it's never gonna happen. Um, but calculators are good for this. Let's see what you get. Sorry, to what decimal place? What's that? Uh, what decimal place, round it to what? Three decimal places. Three decimal places. Uh, you should be able to see my screen, hopefully. I always type what I say. Okay, good, good. So, by the way, I'm going to pop it in the calculator, 2.5 to the 5.7. And we see 185.463328. I want three decimal places. So, the third decimal place is a three, and the check digit is also a three. Three is less than five. So that means I cut off the last three places and 185.46. Any questions on that? That wasn't that one. getting some feedback again, so let me look. I think it stopped. No, nope, it didn't stop. Okay, any questions at all? Okay, so that's not too bad, is it? So that's not how powers work. Um, they come up, and they come up especially in probability. So when you're dealing with probability, if you do something over and over and over again, like say you pick a card, let's say you pick, you pick um, six cards out of a deck with the place. And we wanna find the probability that all six of them are hearts.
I guess I should write finally. Okay, well, for today you're not expected to know how to come up with the formula, but what I can say is the following. We can say P of six parts is equal to one over four to the sixth power. And let's see if you can round to six decimal places. Let's see if you can find that probability. And the hint is it's not very big. Chance of getting six hearts is pretty small. That's, that's even harder than a flesh because that would be a flesh is five hearts out of five hearts. Let's see, let's see a few of you. So one over four to the sixth power to six decimal places. Let's see. Hopefully, if you, you can get it. I've seen a couple of attempts, but let's see. And you can pop in the chat box is the best way. So again, you will need your um, calculator, or computer with calculator. And the URL bar on Chrome always works. That's what I like to use for basics. Okay, I don't see y'all doing it, so let's do it. So we go one over four to the sixth power. Okay. And what you get is point zero zero zero. 244. Four. Notice after the sixth decimal place is a one. So that means we cut it off. Three zeros, 244. Oops, let's go there. So that is equal to 0 0.123244. Any questions on that? Okay, by the way, not very likely at all, right? We're talking about um, 244 in a million chances, okay? Or you can also say 0.02% chance is another way of saying the same thing. Is this clear so far? Okay, now the other thing that happens a lot, which are very related to powers, are roots. Let me um, and I'm only going to do square roots. And any guess on why the only why I'm only going to do square roots instead of all the other roots you might have learned, like cube roots and stuff like that? Yeah, th because. You'll never, I, you sh you'll probably never see anything but a square root in terms of roots in the stats class. And I try to make sure that I'm not throwing math at you that you don't need to succeed in stats. But roots happen a lot. And first thing, just to remind you, let's see if we can do a root just for fun.
what is the square root of 121? Yeah, that's 11. I'm not sure if they make you memorize that anymore. Um, when I was a kid, we had to memorize up to 12. The powers of up to 12. So square root of 121 was when we all knew. I don't know if um, that's true for um, those of you who are, who are in the younger generation, if they still go up to 12 or not. But at least when I was a kid, that's what we had to do. That one I got memorized. No big deal. Now let us do a square root that you don't have memorized. Okay, it'd be very strange if you did. Let's do another square root. So what if we had the square root of 57? Okay, I am pretty sure none of you know what the square root of 57 is. How about to four decimal places? Okay, and by the way, I don't have this one done in, in my head either. Okay, so what I want to do, and again, some of you know how to do this already, but again, I will always remind you and tell you different processes to do roots. So here's one that always works. So roots, let me write square roots. So square roots are the same as the 0 0.5 power. And I like 0 0.5 better than the half for using technology. It's typically easier to type, okay? And I, you can type 0.5. I do the 0 0.5 because it's easier to see when you're reading my screen. Um, but it's actually easier to type with the 0.5 power. Okay, so you can go. 57 to the 0.5 power. Any questions on the notation to make a root happen? Okay, so in particular, let's do it. So 57 to the 0.5. And again, I'm sure you got this one. I wanted four decimal places, five, four, nine, eight, and then it was a three. Look at that, they all send a not add up. So 7.5498. Any questions on that? There are other ways to get square roots sometimes with technology. So let me show you another one. SQRT is very commonly used on the computer. And if you go 50, SQRT of 57, it gives you the same answer. Any questions at all on getting a square root on a computer? Okay. Some calculators have square root buttons, both many do. And if they have that, you can use that too, but you have to make sure you know how to do it. And that's the most important thing. But the shift six carrot button, that's on every calculator. Every computer can handle that. It's standard. That's the good news. Um, the square root is not on all of them. So that's why I recommend remembering the shift six the carrot button. Any questions on square roots? Okay, there's not too much to worry about. It just does it. And again, if, if I hear a lot of feedback, I'll mute you. And then um, you can always unmute if you want to talk, though. Please, please do so. OK, any questions on what a square root is? OK, and what it means, it means that if the answer squared is the question. <laughs> That's what a square root is. OK, so we now know what a power is. A square root really is a power. But it's so it, it's used so often that we tend to do it. So let me give you an example in statistics. The variance 
was found to be and let me do it with an equation show you what the symbol is going to be for variance sigma squared equals 6.2 285. The standard deviation ah, is defined as the square root of the variance. Find the standard deviation rounded to four decimal places. Okay, and again, you're not required to know, you know, what the word variance means, but it's good to get used to it because you'll hear it once in a while. And again, it, it's the square of the standard deviation, which means the standard deviation is the square root of the variance. So let's see if you can all do this. Let's see if we can get a couple answers. Hopefully a couple of the same answers, but we'll see. So what is the standard deviation if the variance is 6.2835? And you can all pop in the chat box, by the way. Okay, at least we got two people with the same answer. Should we try it? So we have 6.2835. I'm going to just copy that, pop it in my calculator, and I'm going to take the square root of 6.2385. I'm going to use the 0.5 way of doing that. And I see 2.50669105. I want four decimal places so that the fourth place is a six. But to the right of that is a nine. Nine is bigger than four. So it rounds up and it's 2.5067. It looks like the one two you're getting right, which is wonderful. So the answer. Is 2.5067. Just a note. Here's a good way of kind of checking reasonableness of your answer. I just go, just round down, take what we call the floor, which means just call it, just drop the 5067 and call it two. And two squared is four. Got it? And now round up and we get three. Three squared is nine. And notice 6.2835 is between four and nine. It's a nice little quick do it in your head way of checking reasonableness. Any questions on what I just did there? So again, two squared is four, three squared is nine, and our number 6.2835 is between those numbers, which, should, which that always has to be true. So that means that we probably did something right. Any questions at all on this example? All right, so now we're going to talk about order of operations. And have you seen PEMDAS, PEMDAS before? I know y'all have, but do you remember it? <laughs> this is really the question. 
Okay. Again, you've seen it better. You might have been 10 years old or 12 years old when you saw it. Okay. And some of you, it's drilled into your brain, which is great. Um, but of course, the word means nothing unless you know what the letters represent. So now the question is, what do the letters represent? So what does P stand for? What does P stand for? Parentheses, good. Okay, I'm gonna, but I'm gonna do it right. Um, so now E stands for exponents. Yeah, please excuse my dear, Sally is another way of remembering. Um, but the important thing is you know what the letters stand for. Okay, but then the next two, unlike parentheses and exponents, the next two are tied, they go together. In fact, it could have been head mass, and that would be just fine, okay? Because multiplication and division, there is no hierarchy for those two in terms of without knowing the order, without knowing left to right. So I'm gonna write multiplication and division. And similarly, a and S are addition and subtraction, and there's no hierarchy for those either without knowing left to right. So I'm gonna write tied and tied. So again, if you just remember PEMDAS, or please excuse my dear Aunt Sally, uh, you could go wrong because multiplication does not always come before division, okay? So if it's a tie, you read from left to right. Any questions on that? All right, so that's, that's kind of the ideas. And now let's actually do some. So let's suppose we have, how about, four times five minus three divided by four minus two. What happens first? The parentheses. Exactly. Parentheses. There's two sets of parentheses. I could do each, I could do them together. Doesn't really matter which one you do first. I will just do them both. So this is equal. Let's do on the same line actually. Equal four times five minus three is two. Divided by. Divided by four minus two is. Two. Two. Okay. Now I don't need the parentheses anymore. So I'm gonna get rid of them. Okay, what goes first? The multiplication or the division? Multiplication. Yeah, but not but not because it's written first in the in the PEMDAS, but because multiplication in this case is to the left and division is to the right. And you read left to right if there's a tie. So that is equal to eight divided by two. Four. And then what's eight divided by two? Four. Four. And there's my answer. Okay, so now let me tell you something that I kind of just wasted our time. And that is, you're not going to have to do this. Why not? The way I just did it. Why are you going to have to do this? in the stats class? Yeah, you can have a calculator. So what you're really gonna do, is you're gonna copy that sucker. 
you're going to paste it in. And notice it just gives you four. All right, but there is some, there are some order of operations that are really, really, really important. And you can get it wrong if you use your calculator, if you don't think first. So let me give you an example. And the example is the following. I even, the funny thing is I gave a webinar today and I kind of did this example. So let me show you what I did. And that is that good old letter. Um, what is that letter? Who remembers how to read that? It's a Greek letter. It's a very important one, and I want you to know it for this class. It comes up every day in stats. It's just uh, yeah, it's sigma. It's a Greek letter, and it's sigma. And it means standard deviation. And that is the funny. Like I said. This, I actually did this today in a webinar because this morning, or actually this afternoon, I taught my stats webinar. And the funny thing, it's not even an online class, but guess what? Everything's an online class now. So I did a webinar and I did this. We looked at segments of X bar. And I'm not gonna get involved in what it all means. That you get when you take stats. So let's look at this. And let's suppose sigma sub x bar, in terms of our calculation, is five point three divided by the square root of thirteen. Okay, so what we need to do is we got to put this in the calculator right, okay? And this is where you have to understand how to do this. So the first thing, and we're going to do a few of these, is let's see how you type this. Maybe you put in the chat box how you put this in your calculator. So I want to make sure you all know how to do this. Put in the chat box how you're going to type this in your calculator. And computer calculator is fine. Okay, if you don't know, that's fine because I'm going to do it, but some of you know. And I'll use the Google uh, URL calculator because that seems to work and it's the same as everything else. I don't see you all jumping in, but too bad. I don't see y'all jumping in. Maybe I'll do it then. Maybe you're confused. You just go 5.3 and then you go to 5 by and then I'm going to use the power way, 13 power 0.5. Any questions on that? So this one's not too bad, but the next one I'm going to do is where everyone makes mistakes. And I want to show you a simpler one first. Now let's put it in. I don't really care what the number is, but hey, I'll get it. Uh, 1.47. Okay, 1.47, that's to four decimal places, by the way, because there's two more zeros. Any questions on that? Any questions? Okay, let's do another example, and this one's going to come up a lot, and this is where people make mistakes. And it's because of order of operations 
And I really think it's because it's order of operations that is not taught <laughs> and should be and needs to be and must be taught. And for some reason, they don't go over it. It's not in the word PEMDAS, which means a lot of people just ignore it. Would you ever need to do the square root first? Um, only if there's some stuff inside the square root. So when you say do the square root first, so if we did the square root, got the square root of 13, and then 5.3 divided by that, that'll work also, and you get the same answer. Does that make sense? So what you may not notice is the square root was done first. So let me explain this, because that's a really good question. And this is why in a calculator, you don't have to worry about it so much. What the calculator does not do, it does not do 5.3 and then divide by 13 and then take the square root. The calculator knows order of operations. So it is going to take the square root of 13 first, get the answer, and then take 5.3 divided by that. So when you're saying, do you ever need to, the answer is absolutely, but it happens by the calculator. So it's never a problem. But I didn't spend any time talking about it because students don't have problems with it. Does that make sense? So the calculator will do it. They'll do it right. But it does it right whether you want to or not. And that's what I'm going to show you the next example. Let's find a Z score. Uh, seven, zero, I had a typo, didn't I? There we go. Let's find the z-score that's written as follows. And this one's going to be messy, but this happens in stats in a big way, so I want to make sure you all can do it and get it right. So let's say the z-score is 6.2 minus 4.3 divided by 7.8 divided by the square root of 12. Let's make that bigger because it's a bit small to see. And let's do this. So it's on the same page. Okay. So this is messier, isn't it? Let me ask you. Is this right? So at 6.2 minus 4.3 divided by, I'll even 7.8 divided by 12 to the 0 0.5. Will that give us the right answer? Okay. And the answer is no, okay? But if you read it, that's what it, that's what it looks like. So I will tell you, there are two mistakes, okay? There's two mistakes here, and we got to fix the two mistakes. So let's see if you can, in your chat box, write down what you need to put in your calculator, because this is not it wrong. And it's not just wrong, but I see it all the time in my stats class. And then they get the wrong answer. And if they're doing um, computer homework, they miss the whole problem. If they're doing a test, I take off points. Um, it's, just a, it's just wrong. So I want to make sure that you can do it right and you don't make that mistake when you get to stats. So see if you can put this in the chat box. Not the answer, 
but the expression you would put into the calculator or the computer. And let's see what you get. Let's see what you write out. So write the expression you would put into the cal to the calculator or computer calculator. And again, you can pop in your chat box. So I'm waiting, giving you a moment to do it because there's a bunch of typing. Okay. Without doing any calculation in your head. Okay, there we go. We got one person. Okay, good, good. Okay, well, let's write it out. So the idea here, what's wrong about this is that the numerator has to be done before the division happens and the denominator has to be done before the division happens and this is a mistake a lot of people make is you must put parentheses around the numerator and put parentheses around the denominator if you don't do that the calculator will do order of operations technically and it, the 6.2 will no longer be in a numerator. Does that make sense? So there's hidden parentheses in this z-score formula because the numerator itself has hidden parentheses and the denominator itself has hidden parentheses. Any questions on that? And then I can copy and paste this guy in the calculator and it should be the right answer. And what it gives me is 0.8438. Any questions on that? Any questions? Okay, let's write it out. Okay, so that comes up a lot where you're gonna have to do something where the parentheses are not shown in the formula, but you have to have parentheses there or it's wrong. And that, I think, is much more important than just memorizing the order of operations. It's really important to know that a numerator needs parentheses and a denominator needs parentheses. Uh, so question, where did the point 0.5 come from? So see the square root of 12? So remember, a square root is the same as a one-half power. Does that make sense? Okay, you could also write SQRT parentheses 12 and parentheses, but that doesn't always work on every computer. It does work on Google, but it doesn't work everywhere. Um, but this caret does work. So that, that's why I kind of like that one because it's kind of foolproof. And calculators have carrots. Sometimes it'll have a little X to the Y button, but, it'll, but the 84, TI-84 has a caret button. So that's why I use that one. Okay, any questions at all on this example? Any questions? Okay, how about, what if we had the following?
the square root of four to the point seven. Make it zero point seven so you can read a little better. Minus let's make that plus actually. Two to the point three. And you want to put that in your calculator. How do you do that? I guess I might again answer your question about the point five. That's a hint. Because there's a square root on this one too. Square roots have point five powers. Let's see if you can put this in your. And again, I don't want the answer. I want what you have to type in your calculator because that's really what you want to learn. The number is not very important because we don't really care. It's not, it's not going to be very meaningful to your life or anything. But the habit to do the process, that's what's more meaningful. So let's see if you can make this one happen. So type out in the chat what you would put in your calculator to make this work. And use the caret 0.5. Or the caret instead of the SQRT. Because SQRT doesn't really work in most calculators, but the caret does. Let's see if you can get this. So again, the square root of four to the point seven plus two to the point three. And what would what would you type in your calculator or computer to make this work using the caret for powers and, and roots? Yeah, we got one answer. It looks good. So the key here is it's not just four to the zero points uh, seven plus two to the zero point three to the zero point five. Okay, that doesn't work. That's how you might read it, but it's not right. You need to put parentheses around the inside of the square root. Okay, so note that if the parentheses aren't there around the entire inside, then it's not right. It'll give you the wrong answer. Any questions on that? And this I can pop into the URL bar. And gives you about 1.9462. Any questions at all on this idea here? Any questions? So again, this comes up in something called the z-score. And the z-score will happen in stats in a big way. It also comes up, I think I wrote it somewhere in here. I have a question yeah. about the calculator. Mm -hmm. On When you're putting in the numbers, mm -hmm. the the parenthesis for carat 0 0.7, mm 
Mm -hmm. How do you get the calculator to go back down to just put a normal plus sign? And because it wants to like stay up there in uh, the component. Um, there's, a, there's a few possibilities to get, and again, it all depends on what calculator you're using. Um, sometimes to, there's a, yeah, is there a right yeah. arrow key for you? Um, I do have a right arrow key. Try hitting the right arrow key. I'm not sure if that'll work. Again, it all depends on the calculator you're using. Um, so try the four carat 0 0.7, and then hit the right arrow and see if that works. Oh, it does. Thank good, you. Good. <laughs> good. Uh, again, I knew it was simple. <laughs> huh? yeah. no, it's always simple, but it doesn't mean it's simple to know how to do it. No, no. I just it's thought to hear someone good. else to do it, tell yeah. you how to do it. Yeah. And that's a, that's a common thing is that right arrow key sometimes moves it out of there. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, I'm doing that all the time. <laughs> yeah. And uh, even some computer calculators, you got to do that. You don't have to do that with the Google bar, <laughs> but you do have to do that for many calculators. How much, how much more? Okay, so uh, it is time, 702. And I want to give you the secret word. The secret word is actually not a word. It's an acronym. Do you guys know what acronym means? Yeah. <laughs> In fact, I'm going to make it all cap. I have a feeling Canvas doesn't care if it's cap or not, but it can't hurt to make it all cap. So the secret word of the day is PAMDAS. Okay, parentheses, exponent, multiplication, division, addition, subtraction. And that's the secret word for today because that's a big piece of what we're doing. So I want to double remind everybody. Let me um, share it. There we go. Let me double remind everyone that next week is your exam, okay? You don't have actually anything else except the webinar, which I'm just gonna talk about the exam, probably won't even go a full hour, and the exam. You're not gonna have a homework assignment to do. You're not gonna have a discussion post to do, um, but you are gonna have the exam. And that, just a note, just to show you what's up. If you go to week six, mini break, nothing due, but you do have a midterm, okay? And there's a secret word quiz, and that is when I can do a little review for the exam, and that's gonna be Monday. And the exam will open up very shortly after we finish our um, webinar. It doesn't mean you should do it Monday night, because you probably want to do some more, you know, practice first. But you can do it anytime between Monday night and a week from Sunday. So whatever works for you, that's your choice. Uh, so what day the exam is, whatever day you want to take it. <laughs> but you can't take it before Monday night. And you can't take it after that Sunday night. Sound fair? And hopefully that's okay with everyone. Nobody's, nowadays you can't really take a trip anyway. <laughs> In the old days I'd have people, well, I'm gonna be, you know, out, you know, doing Mount Everest or something. And I'm not even allowed to do that anymore. So I don't have to worry about that. No one's gonna be climbing Mount Everest because you can't fly. So everyone should be able to make it sometime during that time. Okay. So that's just a note is that the exam is coming up and I'll be talking a lot about it. That's all I'm gonna talk about um, next week but I wanted to remind you to get that set in your calendar. There's nothing else to do, it's just focus on the exam next week. So, let me stop the recording.